let me start this word off this morning by doing something. We've had several sermons on it, but Lord is on my heart, so we're going with it again. If I have offended anybody, no one or no one, I ask you to forgive me. By the same token, if I don't have any fault against anybody in here. And I have forgiven those who wronged me, caused me hurt and pain. But the Lord brought it to my attention that this is the ongoing process. Yeah. You have to forgive David. Because if I remember back and think on, take a little time and think on that wrong that was done to me, hurt, anger, I'm right back in. Like I had never forget. So I have to be conscious about that. I have to take my time every time it's brought to my attention. To forgive. The text this morning is going to come from someplace. Genesis 45. We're talking about Joseph. And you know something about Joseph? It had to be good. The subject this morning is forgiveness. The text this morning is going to start at the Genesis 45, first verse through the fifth verse. And let me say again, it had to be done. For if you know the story of Joseph, you know that prior to this point in the story, Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. Joseph was younger. He was special in his father's eyes. Joseph, y'all know how we are. That young one that get all the attention, or anybody that gets all the attention and draws all the attention, you know why? Every once in a while. The pastor like to hear something good said about him. But as long as that old Joseph is over there, daddy keeps talking, every Joseph ain't doing anything wrong. So the brothers had decided we got to get rid of Joseph. <laughs> I've had enough of him. So they decided that they were going to take Joseph. First they decided to kill him. Dig a pit over him. And then they saw a caravan. They decided, no, we're going we to sell Joseph. We're going to get rid of him and we're going to get a little money for him. So they sold Joseph. Sold him in the slavery. Went back to his dad. Didn't they? The eight of them kicked that boy and I he went off in the woods somewhere and he probably did by now. We found blood on his clothes. We, we show he ain't he ain't coming back. Daddy done free. But Joseph had a calling on his life. All right, all right. Joseph, through the Lord, found a special place in Egypt with that. And y'all know the trials and tribulations that he had went through. He had to run out of his clothes at some point. But he got to be over everything. All of Pharaoh's houses, all of his, everything. And then there came a time when there was a drought in his own country. And his brothers came to him. They didn't know who he was. All they knew was they came to him. An uh, embassy of Pharaoh. Y'all know how we do it, head in hand. You know, we ain't got this, we got a little bit of money. We just see fit to give us. Let us buy a little bit of something so we can take back our bed. And Joseph, knowing who they were, hard as y'all know how it is. We see somebody we hadn't seen in a while and love this. We do good by them, and then on top of that, we, we, we tell, if you need some more, come back, and then we tell your folks, put their money back in the bottom of the bag. Send them, send them back to me. Send it back to me. And you know, the, 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 the occasion came when, when they were about to leave Joseph's, I 
done all this for you. And you're going to leave you with my stuff in your bag? How is it that this is going to happen? And Joseph asked him to bring his father, bring everybody in. Mm -hmm. And then we get to this point. 45th chapter, starting at the first verse. And Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried of every man and called every man to go out from him. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brother. And he wept aloud and said, And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brother, I am Joseph. Do it, my father yet live? And his brethren did not answer for they, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold in the Egypt. And now, therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourself, that ye sold me heaven. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Forgiveness. Do you realize how hard that is? Let me, let me lay this out to you. Well, wait, as they say, where the rubber meets the road. Most of us in here are children. Somebody sells your child in the slave. Or somebody kills your child. God requires you to forgive them. Right. Y'all didn't get that. Obviously, it didn't come over to it. God requires you to forgive them. Let me tell you what I found out that I've seen. Forgiveness is not preached a lot from here. It's not talked about a lot from here. You want to know what? There are churches today that are churches because of unforgiveness. There are people who are pastors in church that they lost their pastor and the first and next in line didn't get the job. So the church was split and somebody went off and formed a new church. Instead of being what God would have you to wait and see what God wants you to do, churches were been split and churches have been formed because of unforgiveness. So I'm not going to preach unforgiveness because I ain't forgave that church over there for, them, for not giving me the position mm -hmm. that I was I was in line for that position. I deserved that position. When the pastor didn't show up, I was there. When they needed somebody to preach, uh, uh, to teach uh, when the Bible, I was there. And then when the pastor left, they gave the job to somebody. No, I ain't staying here. All right. And all my folks come go with me. Right. If you love me, come go with me. We ain't staying here. God said, wait. Where is your forgiveness? See, we look at the house of God as our house. This ain't, this ain't the house of God. This is Pastor Hopkins' house. Pastor Hopkins gets to come in. Pastor Hopkins gets to tell y'all what y'all do in Pastor Hopkins' house. Instead of allowing God to use me and you see, sometimes it's not the right it's not the right place. Right. Amen. See, when I before I came in, I thought I was in the right place, the right time. Being tough food, I loved it. Wasn't a whole lot of numbers that I could do what I wanted to, come when I wanted to. They, they, they were just happy with me. But God had a different plan in mind. Amen. Amen. When I got that position up there, God told me that I was going to have that position. They had people come in, interviewing for the job, and preaching for the job. And, I just, I, you think I want to be, I'm going to be all proud God didn't tell me. He just told me that was going to be my position. So when they did all that interview and these people coming in and preaching and all like that, when it was all over with, they prayed about it and they came uh, Would you be our pastor? I've been your pastor. Y'all just didn't know. Forgiveness. Forgiveness has to start in here. You have to, after a godless sorrow. Let me, let me give you the definition for forgiveness. Forgiveness is the intentional 
and voluntary process by which a victim, and we all are victims sometimes, or sometimes we make other people victims, undergoes a change of feeling and attitude regarding an offense. You have to change your feeling about it. You have to change your attitude about what happened to you. You are right. And see, that's what a lot of us, but we want to know, I got a right to be made. I got a right to be made. Yes, you do. That's why forgiveness is so important. You have to make, take that right of yours and put it beside you. I got a right to hate them the way they did me up there in church. I got a right to be made. I did everything that they asked me to do, and then they gave it to somebody else. I got a right. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You've got a right. But forgiveness is changing that attitude. Yeah. Changing the yeah. feeling for what they or what whoever did toward you. The offense that they did. You have to let go of the negative emotions of the vengeance. Woo! We have an opportunity to show from here forgiveness, you know, even if you teach forgiveness out of here, how do you do it? There has to be something more. Forgiveness has to flow out of the good people. Before you tell me, I want to see it from you. Or after you tell me, while you tell me, during the time that you're telling me, I want to see you live what you preach. Right. I want to see you walk what you say. Mm -hmm. I want to see you do what you're trying to tell me to do. Right. You know, that was a thing in, in working with kids. They, say, they don't want to know. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's right. You can be smart as you can be. That child is not going to care until they know that you care about them. And that's the same thing about us. We don't care what kind of degree you got. If that degree isn't helping you help me, I don't care. It's time to get up so we can walk. It's time to open our eyes so we can see. Amen. It's time to befriend somebody so we can be friends. Amen. It's time to knock so the door can be open. It's time for us. It's time for us to forget where we are. And when I say that, I mean this. When we ask somebody, if you need prayer, if we ask somebody to raise their hand, praise God, we, we Oh Lord, there's my boss back there. He, I can't pray in front of him because you know, he don't believe in God. But I can't. It's time for you to put word about where you are and who's around you. It's time that we children of God act like we're children of God. And put word about who is going to say what. We are forgiven. You know, to be forgiven, you have to ask, Lord, forgive me. Be godly sorry for what you've done. Because we all have sinned and fallen. Yeah. We all have come short. But we can ask for forgiveness. God will stand us up. He'll put us on firm foundation. And we can go on from there. We don't have to take back. I don't have to turn around and see where I've been. I already know where I've been. And the wrong reason I, I'm not back there now is I didn't like it. See, we turn around and we look and see how, how good time was back then. Time wasn't that good back then. When y'all playing away, it wasn't that good back then. Feeding the dog and the cold. It wasn't that good back then. You know, now you can get on the track and knock that out in a couple of hours, but it took you days or weeks to plot. You had to go out and cut trees and they get heat and to cook them. Right now, just hit a button. Come on now. God has blessed us. And all we got to do is just keep forgiving. Oh, Lord, but you know, that, that man wrong. But keep forgiving. And Lord, I, I just forgave him last week and he can't, but keep forgiving. Yeah. Lord, you know that joke. Every time I forgive him, he come back and he says something. Keep forgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, keep forgiving us. Every time I forget knocked out, every time I, I, I fall down, he picks me back up and says, yeah. My son, yeah. I forgive you. Yeah. You can get back up. You can get back in line. You yeah. are still loved. But Lord, he ain't like me. That's a sinner. Wasn't I a sinner? Wasn't you a sinner? We all were sinners. And at some point in this time, before we die, we will be sinners again. 
But you know, the Lord, he a big sinner. He, he, he believed in them lesbian things and them, them gay rights and all. We are all sinners. There's no big sin, no little sin. We're all sinners. Trying to make it to heaven. We have to forget this. Well, you know, I don't associate with them. Maybe you don't associate with them, but you can't tell them the good things about Christ. You can put your feelings aside. Titus. First chapter 16 verse. They profess that they know God, but in work they deny Him. Being a bone, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. They say, they profess that they know God. They preach, they teach, they prophesy. Y'all know the people that come up there. I got a word for you. God said, no word. Get your word. Listen, I got a relationship with God. You want me to know something? He said, everybody that come up and profess to you to know God, Thank you. I open for his life. You go ahead and tell me you need to. Everybody that stands in a pulpit is not saved. Everybody who gives you their opinion of what the word says has not consulted God. We have to pray. We have to ask God to reveal his word to us. Not to brother, not to sister, not to preacher, not to pastor. Tell me, Lord, I want to know. That old son that said, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's each and every one of us standing in the need of prayer. It's the preacher, it's the teacher, it's each and every one of us. We are a disobedient people. Sometimes God said, go, and you said, oh Lord, book. Sometimes God says, say, and you say, oh, Lord, but. Sometimes God said, forgive, and you said, oh, Lord, but. But, 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 I let, sent my son to die for you. Yeah, Lord, but. I go to church every Sunday, Lord, so I ought not to, but, but. He hung, bled, and died for you. Yeah, Lord, but. If I forgave them, Lord, they do the same thing again. And what are we doing? God forgives us for lying, and you know I had a big problem there. I wouldn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, so I, whatever, you know, what I thought was a good answer, I gave to them, because I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Now I, I, I tell people all the time, well, I used to tell them work, but you know, work them. <coughs> don't ask me, because I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't want me to hear the truth, don't you ask me, because I'm going to tell you. If you don't want to know the truth, don't ask somebody who's going to tell you the truth. If you don't want to know there's a heaven and a hell, then don't ask somebody who's going to tell you the truth. If you don't want to know that Satan is still busy, then don't ask somebody. If you don't want that unforgiveness will send you to hell, then don't ask somebody. Because it's time. Mm -hmm. It's time that we got unforgiveness out of the church. Unforgiveness has got its place in the world. But it has no place in the church. Amen. We who are children of God have no place but unforgiveness in our hearts. Amen. Is there anything that you won't forgive? You're not God. God has forgiven all your sins if you ask. God will continue to forgive your sins if you ask. Amen. But we who are children of God, it's time for us to get it out of the church. Get it out of our lives. Because we live a life that's supposed to be pleasing to God. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle and unforgiveness will not be in the midst. 